Good morning. Those of you who are here and those of you who are joining us via Zoom or afterwards on whatever means appropriate and necessary. Our first hymn is in the hymnal at number 546, Awake My Soul, Stretch Every Nerve. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, we beseech thee, O Lord, the Spirit, to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot exist without thee may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the first lesson. A reading from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, beginning at the 23rd verse. In those days, says the prophet, am I a God at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? 
I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name, the name of Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer which breaks the rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 82, which we will read responsibly, breaking at the asterisk. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan, defend the humble and the needy. Rescue the weak and the poor power the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. A reading from the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brethren, by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time should fa would fail me, to, for fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. 
At that time, Jesus said, I came to cast fire upon the earth and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with and how am I constrained until it is accomplished? Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For henceforth in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against her mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the multitudes, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once a shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time, the gospel of the Lord? From today's gospel, do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. This is a favored technique of Jesus rhetorically, where he sets up something which sounds good, enticing you into agreeing with it, and sets up something which sounds bad, enticing you to think that's the wrong answer. He then flips it on its end, tells you that what you thought was right is wrong, what you thought was wrong is right, and then leaves those who, to whom he's just told it, scratching their heads and wondering what's going on. Generally speaking, he then gets even more cryptic and doesn't explain what he meant. Well, that's, that's given preachers a job for the next 2,000 years. And that's what I'm about to do now, is tell you, as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. Uh, how many, when you were in school, read William Golding's Lord of the Flies. Anyone? Yes. Okay. I, I must have had a perverse head of the English department when I was in school because I was in a boarding school, traditionally a boys boarding school with recently admitted girls, but it still very much ran like a boys boarding school. And in our first year, they gave us books of boys in boarding school being terrorized and being terrors. We read uh, Mas uh, Master Harold and the Boys by Athel Tugard. We read uh, Such Such Were the Joys by uh, The Name Escapes. We read Lord of the Flies by William Golding and a separate piece by John Knowles. I don't know what they were thinking, and yet I do. They were saying, don't be like those guys. These were negative examples of how you're supposed to behave in school and by extension, how you're supposed to behave in life. Lord of the Flies uh, is an example of what my friend Heidi says about gardening. She said, the difference between your beautiful, well-tended garden and a jungle is about six to 12 months of neglect. And so it was with William Golding's Lord of the Flies. The story, if you didn't read it, was of a British boarding school. Uh, boys are, or colonial boarding school, boys are on a plane which crashes on a desert island in the South Pacific somewhere. It's been a while since I read it, but this is the gist of it. And within weeks, not years, they go from being well uniformed, well behaved disciplined British schoolboys to virtually cannibalistic pagans in a society where they make one of them the most powerful, Ralph, a demigod who is worshipped, feared, and obeyed, and the weak one, Piggy, 
the victim of human sacrifice, while they hold up a skull as that which they worship. Weeks, not years. The difference between a well-tended, beautiful garden and a jungle is about six to 12 months, but in human nature, it's six to 12 weeks. When I was in biology class and we were studying the theory of evolution, Mr. Amos showed it to us exactly how it works. He put in two insects of some sort and not enough food to feed, feed all of them. And so what happened? One killed the other to get the food. If left to our animal devices, if left to our own self-interest, we don't have the self-interest to treat others as others would treat us. We don't have the self-interest to serve our fellow men and women. We have the self-interest to kill them and take their food. Lord of the Flies describes that. And so, we have today's gospel where Jesus turns that world on its head. That world of might makes right in which they were living, where the occupying Romans who yes, brought them roads and yes, brought them all sorts of good things, but also brought them subjugation, brought them crooked taxation, brought them laws which took away their freedom and their national identity. He came to them and said, do you think that I brought to give peace? No, I tell you, but rather division. In our own world, I think that seeking a copacetic existence can be a false goal to try to keep everything just running smoothly without controversy, without division. If that is our goal, it can often lead to real problems because controversy must come before real growth. Division must come before growth and health because as Jesus puts it, that world needed to be turned on its end. That world in which right was not made by right, but by might. That world of William Golding's Lord of the Flies needed the intervention of them being found by civilized adults at the end. Or they would have eaten each other. All of them. That world was not the world of the kingdom of God. It was the animal kingdom. And so, what might that mean for us today? We experience each of us, those moments in our lives where everything seems stacked against us, in which we seem alone, in which if there are five in our household, we're in the minority of the two, not the three, or maybe even the one against the four. You've experienced it in your families, you've experienced it in your lives, you've experienced it at work or whatever the situation might be in which justice is the last thing you've experienced. And injustice is exactly what you feel that you're experiencing, even sometimes from those close to you. And so where is the hope in that? Where is the goodness? The good news, the one who explains what Jesus was really talking about often is in the epistles and St. Paul. And last Sunday, he put, pointed it out to us this way. He described faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the assurance of things hoped for. And in today's epistle, he spells it out really clearly. 
and I want to offer it to you again, just as a meditation by way of reflecting on what we might think of in our lives. Listen, if you will, to today's epistle again with new ears. He's speaking to the Hebrews, i.e. the people around Jerusalem. Brethren, by faith, people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. He's drawing this distinction between people of faith and people who would destroy people of faith and what really happens in the end. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they'd been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given friendly welcome to the spies, a story to read later. And what more shall I say? And he goes on like that. Please take this home and read it again as an example of good examples of where the good guys win in the end. The good guys win in the end. I was given this example in a wonderful British television show that I've been watching recently with my wife called The Outlaws. And in it, one of the outlaws says to the other who's experiencing dreadful betrayal in business by his own father in a company in which he's the son of father and son in the business. And the woman says to him, you've got all the privilege in the world, but you're sitting there just weeping for yourself because you're trying to do it by yourself. Ask someone else for help. Ask someone else for help and you'll find what you need. And I'll leave you with this image. The Christian life is where two or three are gathered together or more as we are this morning. We've invited God into our midst and he will bless us. A symbol of that, uh, our founding fathers incorporated into the very iconography of our national monuments in Washington, into the base of the Lincoln Memorial, into the speaker's rostrum in the House of Representatives is the ancient Roman symbol of the fasces or fasces, however you want to pronounce it. It's the, in American iconography, represented 13 visible rods with an ax inside of it bound together by leather straps. It's the symbol of the 13 colonies, each of which were breakable and by themselves, but when bound together, they were strong and unbreakable. If we come together, if we come together with other people of faith and we push aside the unrighteous and we push aside the people who would bring us down, not seek peace with them, but seek separation from them. This is not separating ourselves and being mean to them. It's being true to our faith in God. It's being true to the faith to which he calls us. So what might that mean for you? I can't say because I haven't lived your life, but I know what it means for me. I know it means separating myself from people who would bring me down. I know it's separating myself from people who would abuse me. I know it means separating myself from people who clearly have their own interests at heart and not the kingdom of God. And so it would be for you. And I invite you to join together with people of faith like that facious. Go for 13, it's a good number. It's not an unlucky number in America. It's a very lucky number and find yourself strongly together with that group. It was also a good number in the Bible. It was Jesus and his 12 disciples. 13 ain't a bad number. It's a very good number. And so I tell you, it is good news when our Lord himself said to us today in the gospel, do not ask, do I bring, come to bring peace on earth? For I do not. I come to bring division. And out of that division will come 
real faith and real peace, the peace which passeth understanding, not the false peace which passeth away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand as we continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the church and for the world, remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Ian, our bishop, Jeffrey, our bishop-elect, me, God's unworthy servant in this place, and in the wider church, for the extra-provincial churches and their bishops, in the Diocese of Connecticut, for fresh expressions of the church, for missional experiments, for students preparing at this time to enter our schools, colleges, universities, and seminaries, for school, college, and university chaplains and campus ministries. In our parish, we pray for the congregational staff, for Mary Carolyn Morgan, Jorge and Elkin Marine, Dana Flack, for parishioners, Mary Sol Jason and Lauren Stevens, Maya and Nina Edwards, Michael, Gabrielle, and Anna Grace Maolo, Bernadette Stephen and Stephanie Moots, Tom Steen, Joy and Joseph Yang. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations, particularly Joseph, our president, Ned, our governor, Fred, our first selectman, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Praying especially at this time, for either silently or loud for those who may have birthdays or anniversaries at this time, or those from whom we are separated by space or time. Lord, in thy mercy, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Praying especially for those we now name either silently or aloud. Lord, in thy mercy, we commend to thy mercy all who have died especially those we now name, either silently or aloud. That thy will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all thy saints in thine eternal kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against thee and thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Beloved, greet one another in the name of the Lord. It is wonderful to see each of you this morning and welcome and hello to all those who are joining us remotely. Uh, if any are new or visiting and want to stand up and introduce themselves, that's great. If you'd like us to say hello after the service, that's great too. Are there any announcements? A wonderful lazy hazy day of summer, luckily not as hazy as it was last Sunday. Uh, may this respite of weather continue. We continue with our operatory hymn, which is number 596. Judge eternal throned in splendor. Uh, remain seated. This Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory and praise of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and for the special intentions which each of us brings to this altar this day. May we hold those in our hearts and in our minds now. As we continue and say, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. 
it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. For with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, thou art one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of thee, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my cup of the New Testament, and my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks, for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him, although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O 
Father Almighty, world without him. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover and sacrifice for us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come into my room, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. All baptized Christians, regardless of denomination, are welcome to receive Holy Communion in the Episcopal Church. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have thy body and soul into everlasting life. Lord Jesus Christ, preserve my body and soul into everlasting Give our Lord Jesus Christ to live my body and soul into everlasting life. Give our Lord Jesus Christ to live my body and soul into everlasting life. Give our Lord Jesus Christ to live my body and soul into everlasting life. Give our Lord Jesus Christ to live my body and soul into everlasting life. Bless you, God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be upon us in the name of the Elder. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be upon us. Our post-communion hymn, remaining seated, is number 321, My God, Thy Table Now is Spread, in 321. My God, Thy Table Now is Spread. My cup is not the full of the 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn, and at this point I simply want to thank as people do vote in Chicago early and often our volunteer a uh, wonderful musician Nick Warsnap who's also been selecting our hymns he brings this from the uh, New English hymnal and it is a, a, a an alternative tune maybe not the one you know for in Christ there is no east or west so would you play the first full verse for us and then we'll join in with the uh, the second time through
May this week be a blessing to all those who have joined us remotely. And uh, I remind you of the back from vacation now, fully available to you. Please do reach out. May this week be a blessing to you.